So as we look forward to the uh, mid-unit uh, quiz, we have 4.1 to 4.3. We're talking about fundamental counting principle. We're talking about factorial notation. What does that mean? And we're also talking about permutations with different objects and uh, conditions and restrictions. Okay, So those are the three things that we're covering in this quiz coming up tomorrow. And uh, like I say, here's your, uh, your little review that we're going to go over. So. What is the fundamental counting principle? Okay, that was in chapter or in section 4.1. Um, so the fundamental counting principle is used to calculate the number of ways that a task can occur in a counting problem. So the product of the number of ways that each task can occur results in the ways that all the tasks can occur. For example, here's your example: the breakfast menu uh, at a at a certain restaurant has four choices of eggs. So you can do sunny side up, scrambled, poached, or soft boiled. It has two choices of toast and three choices of meat, bacon, ham, or sausage. Uh, you must order one from each category, so if you do that, basically the question that you can answer using this fundamental counting principle is how many different breakfasts can you order, right? So how many times could you go back and order something different every time? So uh, an, an egg, a certain type of egg, with a certain type of toast, with a certain type of meat. And how many ways could you do that completely differently? Well. As you notice, there are four choices for eggs. So the first decision is the eggs. There's, there's three decisions to be made here for your breakfast. There are four choices for the first decision. There are two choices for the toast. And there are three choices for the meat. The fundamental counting principle says you just multiply all those uh, different number of choices together. Okay, Just multiply them all together. You get 24. Right? Uh, a little cue here for you is when you see the word and, so how can you arrange you know, eggs and toast and uh, meat? Okay. So when it says and, that's usually when you use the fundamental counting principle. If you see the word or in there, that usually indicates that we're talking about you have to add the different um, uh, arrangements for each case. So you usually you add when it says or. Okay. So that's the first part. That's, that's sort of 4.1 fundamental counting principle. Any questions on that? Yes. So if it's four, is the answer nine? Well, the, uh, the, okay, so the or question, uh, we didn't have too many or questions. Uh, the thing is, is that if you, s most of them are and, if they are or. So I don't have an or question uh, just right here, but um, I if you had, uh, you know, let's say you have four, four eggs uh, or two pieces of, of toast, how many ways could you arrange those? So, you know, it would be like how many ways could you arrange the four types of eggs, and then how many ways could you arrange the two types of toasts, and then you would add them together. So or, but if it's if it's all at once, then you would multiply them. Does that make sense? So yeah. So most of them will be and. If it's or, like we did see in some parts, uh, there would be you'd have to run the different cases. So it's this one, or this one, or this one. You know, that kind of thing. So if it's and, that's the fundamental counting principle. If it's or, you add up the different ways you could do those arrangements and you add them up. All right, the second part here, factorial notation. All right, so factorial notation is this little symbol right here, the exclamation mark. In math, that's called the factorial. And if you have a certain number of things and you want to know how many possible ways could you arrange all of those things with no restrictions, then you use the factorial. So if we have 20 people in this classroom right now, how many ways could we line up at the door? Okay, if we were lining up at the door, how many ways could we do that? Well, you take 20 factorial, or that's 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, all the way down times 3 times 2 times 1. And that's what factorial means. If you think about the fundamental counting principle, you would have, you know, 20 different spaces here in front of the door. And then, you know, you have 20 choices for who could be first. And then once that first person is placed, you have 19 people left over, and so on. Then there's 18 people, then 17, and so on, until you get down to just one person left. So that's what factorial means. It's related to the fundamental counting principle. Okay. The other thing to remember that this is what n factorial looks like uh, just in general. So a general sort of equation for the factorial is you take the number, that's n, and you multiply it by one number less than n. Then you multiply it by two numbers less than n. Then three numbers less than n, and so on, until you get down to just one. Then you stop at one. 
You never go to zero, and you cannot have any negatives there. Okay? Questions? Yes, you, all, you can always watch the video. Mr. Mathwell, you can watch the videos if you have questions. Absolutely. Amen. All right. Okay. Uh, the third one. So this is really 4.3. Uh, how can you determine the number of permutations? So we started using this word, and that is just definite arrangements, right, in definite order. So arrangement of different things in a definite order. So if we have A, B, C, okay, A, B, and C, permutation means that A, B, C is different than A, C, B. Okay, it's the same three, but because they're in a different order, that's a different permutation. Okay, so when you don't use all of the objects, so let's say we have 20 people in this class and I want to know how many ways we could line up five people at the door, just five of those 20. So we have 20 people and we want to pick, that's what the P here is for, pick, and we want to pick five at a time. So 20 people, we pick five. So it could be the first five right here, then it could be the second five, then it could be the third five, or whatever. And then all of those different groups, how many ways could you arrange all the people in those groups? So it ends up to be quite a bit. Here's the formula for that, and of course you can do this on your calculator as well, using the NPR button. And uh, it's a, there's, there's the NPR, that's what it looks like. Uh, if we do it five, pick two. And so uh, in this calculator right here, it's in the probability part right there, but you should have an NPR button on your calculator. Okay. Now there are, sometimes there are restrictions as well, uh, and I'll do a few examples here just so you can see what those look like. Okay, so let's do some examples. Here's, the, here's one example from 4.1. This is in your mid-chapter review. You can do this one and some others for practice for tomorrow. And this is what the first question says. A sub shop offers the following choices. Three types of buns, five types of cold cut meats, three types of cheese, 12 different toppings, and three different sauces. So if we're making a sub and we have all of these uh, decisions to make, bun, meat, cheese, topping, sauces, and we know how many, dis how many choices we have for each decision, this is, is a fundamental counting principle. So if Mario wants a sub with one item from each category, how many different subs can he choose from? So we have buns, we have cold cut meats, we have cheeses, we have toppings, and we have sauces. So one, two, three, four, five. I have three choices for buns, five choices for the meat, three choices for cheese, 12 choices for toppings, and three for sauces. So you multiply all those together, and what do you get? 1620. 1,620, thank you. So if that is correct, punch all those buttons right, just multiply these all out then that's how many choices you have for different uh, subs. So you could go back there 1,620 times, really, if you wanted to, and never get the exact same sub. Never the exact same. Okay? Questions? Just simply multiply them. All right, so from 4.2, this is where we talked about factorial. Okay, eight factorial. So A over here, eight factorial is actually this right here multiplying by all the numbers that are one less until you get to one boom then you stop so eight factorial you could do this on your calculator or of course on your calculator you have a factorial button somewhere probably a second function and uh, you could do eight and then just go to that function there eight factorial and that's forty thousand three hundred and twenty okay all right, so how many different lineups can be made formed by nine players on a softball team? That would be nine factorial. Okay, so on. Yeah, question? Is nine factorial over six factorial the same as nine factorial subtracted by six factorial? Uh, is it the same as nine minus? No, no, nine factorial divided by six factorial. Let's, let's take a look at that. So nine factorial is actually this, right? And then when you get to the 6, that's factorial, times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? And so over here, now we have 6 factorial on the bottom, and this is where we can see that, hey, I have a factor that's the same on the top and bottom. It's gone, okay? So that 9 times 8 times 7 is your answer. Now, I think what you're asking about is, is this the same as maybe an NPR? Could you write it like this? So from 4.3, we could write it like this. What is this value right here, written in NPR. 
Is this 9 pick 6? Is it 9 pick something else? 9 pick 3? Okay, well that's going to be 9 factorial, and again this is 4.3 now, but I'm glad you're going there, divided by 9 minus 3 factorial, which is 9 factorial over 6 factorial. You're absolutely correct. This is it right here. Okay, so that was that might have been what you were thinking when you were doing the subtracting. Okay, so 9 minus 3, yeah. But 9 factorial divided by 6 factorial isn't the same as 9 factorial minus 6 factorial. That's not the same. It's divided by. All right, so finally, let's do this one right here. Okay, so Manny's the captain of a 15-member soccer team that's won his city championship. How many ways can Manny and two other players line up to receive the championship trophy if the captain must be first in line? So, two different ways you could look at this. I'm going to talk about both ways. Method one, fundamental counting principle. I like this way. It's very straightforward. It's very concrete. The captain has to be first in line. There's only one captain, so there's only one choice for the first in line. Okay? How many, if we're talking about all of the team members, how many could line up behind the captain? 14, because there's 14 uh, players left over. Now that two of them are placed in the lineup, how many are remaining for this third spot? 13. Okay. Okay, so, so yeah, that's, that's the second method. So here we go, we multiply these out, you get 182. So there's 182 different ways that we could do this. The captain and then two others, and considering their order. Now, the other method, which you've alluded to, yeah, is using the... Um, the permutation uh, formula there, which if you think about it, the captain still has to be in the first spot, but you could look at it a little bit differently. You could say, I now have 14 players left over and I want to pick two of them. And when you do the P, the permutation, that factors into it the order, okay? So you could have Johnny and Sally, but also Sally and Johnny. Then you could have Johnny and Bill, and then Bill, and you know, so you know what I'm saying? So this P factors in the order as well. And yes, you will find that 14 pick 2 is exactly 182. So that works as well. Okay? Any questions at all? 4, 1 to 4, 3, anything about this? Fundamental counting principle, factorial, permutations, with restrictions, with conditions. Yes? Okay, so question was, permutations, does order matter? Yes, order absolutely matters with permutations. Mm -hmm. Remember that ABC is different than ACB, and so on. We have six of them. So six different permutations with three different objects. So here are the rest of the questions for the mid-chapter review. I would encourage you to do as many as possible in preparation for the upcoming quiz. Yeah. I want to ask you about number one. So if the question says...